Hello everybody, it's me, Walter the Germany Ball, and I am back with Console Conversations. I'm very happy to be doing this episode as it is an extremely important one. This is probably going to be a shorter one though, because I'm only going to be over going over five games. I don't have a guest with me, so it's just me. It's just five entries on this list, and I've talked some of these entries to death, so I won't, you know, go on for too long about some of them. And with that being said, what is the topic of today's video that is so special? Well, it is five games. The five games that have had the largest impact on me in my life. These are five games that are the most important to my personal history of playing games and enjoying games. Uh, these are in no particular order. Uh, well, they are. They are in a particular order, but not by how impactful they were, no. It's just when they, when I experienced them. So, for example, it'll start off with something that came out in the 90s, and it'll end off with something that came out very recently. So, um, you know... It's basically, it's a timeline. I'm making a personal little gaming timeline to show you guys. And so to start off, the first game that has that had a big impact on me was Spyro the Dragon. Now this one I'm going to probably talk about for a while. Spyro the Dragon is my favorite game of all time. Even though it might not be the best game of all time in my opinion, it is still my favorite. And it's because it had such an impact on me. Um, and I have so many memories of playing it, replaying it over and over and over again, and enjoying every second of it. It's meticulously designed. It has a design that feels like it was built for you to want to keep coming back to it and to feel a sense of comfort when playing it. Uh, and I love the sequel, and the third game I don't really remember that much about, but I remember thinking there were some good parts to it. But this one still remains printed in my mind as just so good because it's just such an important game for me. And not only is it important because I have so many memories with it, but it is really one of the first games, mm, probably the first game that I ever like owned and beat myself. Uh, I, you know, I knew people and I played games like Mario and, you know, Legend of Zelda and all that. Heck, maybe I even beat some games. Um, and, you know, I, so I have memories of, you know, games like Mario, uh, f that I played before I played Spyro, but I didn't, like, own the game, and I never beat the game, I just kind of played it, you know, I knew somebody who owned the game, and they were like, hey, you want to try, it? and I'm like, okay, and I have played those games before this, but this is the first game, I had the PlayStation, and I got this game, and I'm like, okay, let's, let's see what's up with this, with these video games, and I played it, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing, and that was really the start of what you see today, where I'm a huge fan of the gaming industry. I mean, just look at what you're watching right now. You're watching the uh, 38th episode, 38th episode, 40th if you count the specials, 38th or 40th episode of a gaming-centered podcast from me that I created. Uh, so yeah, I clearly like it, and this is the game that really kicked that off for me, and I love it to death. I love it through all these years. I will always love it. It will always have such a profound impact on my life, and it's truly just an amazing game that I really, that really kicked off my interest in the medium as a whole, uh, let alone just play PlayStation and platformers specifically. And then the second game is another huge one, Pokemon Gold and Silver. These, now, the remakes of these, I actually prefer to the originals, but the originals, don't get me wrong, are still great, and that is still my favorite. The remakes are my favorites um, in the whole Pokemon franchise. Uh, and a lot of people think that, but you know, Gold and Silver, it's just, it's so good. And let me explain why. One, it's, a, it's an amazing sequel, just all around one of the best video game sequels 
of all time, at least on a Nintendo console. Two, it looked amazing for a Game Boy game. Three, the story was really interesting. Four, it introduced a ton of awesome Pokemon. Five, it has a very unique charm. And six, it's packed to the brim with stuff to do, especially the remake. You know, even in the original, you had the entire big game, which already had a ton of awesome stuff to do, and then you have all of Kanto available to you as well. The whole region from the first game is available, well, maybe, I don't remember exactly, I think it's like a trimmed down version, but it's almost as if you're getting red and blue inside of this game as the post game. So it has the best post game in Pokemon history, undeniably, there is nothing that comes close to that. And it's just such an enjoyable experience, and it has such a charm to it, to the point that, I kid you not, it made me read a manga. A manga. I don't know, you might not know what this is, and if you do, okay. Uh, basically, it is a graphic novel type thing. It's like a comic, but not really. There are, there, there, there are these books. They're books that you read um, right to left instead of left to right. Um, they're from Japan, and they are basically what most anime come from. So, you know, movies are, you know, books are adapted into movies, and anime or are, are, uh, manga are adapted into anime, basically. Um, and yeah, I read manga from Gold and Silver, and I loved it. So yeah, and coming from someone who barely, you know, deals with that at all, like, I, it is not anything against manga or anime, I just don't, I've never really experienced that much of it. That's a huge deal, uh, because it made me do that, because I was just so much of a fan of those games, and I really enjoyed the story, and it just has such a charm for me, and it, I will never forget my times with the game, uh, and the remakes as well, both of them, and they're just great, they're just amazing, and portable gaming really introduced me to portable gaming, because before then I was just like, uh, what, what's a Game Boy, and then I tried these games, and I'm like, Okay, and now I'm still a Pokemon fan to this day. And the third game, we're going to jump along a huge period because for the majority of the era after that, you know, there are a lot of games like the PS2 era, PS3 era. I have not played a lot of those games, to be honest. Uh, I have mostly just played games from the era before that. I don't know why, but... It's just those, I guess, interest me more, and now I'm kind of interested in seeing what those two have to offer, and I have started to experience more of those and play more of those, and I don't regret it. I think I like a lot of those games so far, but I have more fond memories from the past about those games, uh, you know, Game Boy, you know, Game Boy Advance, DS, all the way up to there, PS1, PS2 somewhat, all those, you know, but... So, there aren't a ton of memories from those consoles, so we're skipping ahead to 2017. Uh, and I'm going to put you in the shoes of me in 2017, so this is before I even start my YouTube channel. So, the 3DS was, and still is, my favorite console ever. Just so many amazing games, great design, great form factor, just a ton of content. It's, a, it's just my favorite console ever, and nothing will... I don't know if anything will ever be able to beat it. And I have this this console, and I love it. And I have, uh, and I really enjoyed the Wii. I really enjoyed the Wii, and I enjoyed, you know, game, pretty much, I'm more of a portable Nintendo person myself. I have more experiences with the portable side, because I did own a GameCube, but I never really used it. Um, and I do own a Wii U, but um, it's a Wii U, and Wii games are pretty expensive, so I've not really, you know, experienced that. So it's really portable for me. And then I find out about this thing, which has Mario Odyssey coming for it. And now, I was a huge Zelda fan, but for some reason, I just didn't find out about Breath of the Wild. I don't know how this happened, but I went for months and months just not knowing anything that there was a new Zelda coming out. And I knew that there was a new Mario coming out, and I was like, okay, I need to get my hands on this thing. And in August of 2017, I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to do it, I'm going to buy it. And I buy it, 
and then I find out that they made an open world Zelda game years in the making that I somehow didn't know about for this thing that's already out, so I don't need to wait for Mario Odyssey, and I buy it, and I loved it so much, and Mario Odyssey gets an honorable mention, because those two games combined made me love the Switch as much as I do, even if it currently is struggling. Uh, well, you know, not in sales, not in money, obviously, but in terms of impressing me personally. But Breath of the Wild really introduced me to open-world gaming. You know, Spire the Dragon introduced me to gaming pretty much in general for the most part. Pokemon Gold and Silver introduced me to portable gaming and a lot of what Nintendo had to offer. Breath of the Wild introduced me to the Switch and open-world gaming. And it just, it blew my mind, and I think it's the greatest game of all time. And it's just such an amazing game, and it made me even more of a Zelda fan. I went back and replayed some of my favorites, like the Oracles games, which I still maintain. 2D Zelda, I do still like a bit more than 3D, but Breath of the Wild is undeniably the best, and that one is 3D, so, you know, it's close. And then, number four is Horizon Zero Dawn, which I played just a few months after... Or no. No, I did not. Uh, I played this around two years after Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, in August of 2019, I believe I bought this game. Because it, it was so cheap. It was $16. And I went to Target. And I, and you know, Target has a game section. This was back when I lived in America, of course. And I went to Target, and Target has a video game section, of course. So, I went to the video game section, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buy this game, and they didn't have it. They didn't have it. So, I'm like, okay, whatever, I'll go home and I'll order it on Amazon. And that was a great decision, because there was some deal going around where I got it for liter for almost nothing. It was like $16, and I think I got it for like a few dollars or nothing. I think I might have gotten it for free, I don't remember. But I got it in August, it shipped... And I just lost it. I've reviewed this game twice. That's how much I love it. Uh, yes, I have reviewed Breath of the Wild zero times, but that's not because I don't love it. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is just fantastic. If you want more information, watch my review. But I'm just going to say it really introduced me to stro story-driven gaming. There is another game that I'm going to get to, the last game on this list. Uh, well, that's a funny way of putting it. Um, which did in really introduce me to that, but uh, this really propelled my love for Sony because, you know, I never owned a PS3 until now. Uh, when Now I do own one because I had to replace my broken PS2, which F's in the chat for my PS2. 21 years of service, and it is now dead. But it has been replaced with a PS3. So now I own a PS3. But I did not when it was the hot new item. Because it was super expensive. And I just didn't really pay attention to that stuff. But then I had a PS4. And I was like, okay, I didn't really use this thing even. But I guess I'll keep it around. Because it's my way of playing a lot of third party stuff. So I used it somewhat. And then I got this game. I bought this game. And it was just fantastic it was just so good it blew my mind it was so good the story was so amazing the graphics were so amazing both of those were things i really didn't see because you know i didn't play a lot of big budget sony exclusives until then and i played it and i'm like wow this looks amazing the story is so good the combat is so fleshed out the music is so good it's so inspiring it has such an amazing theme such a great protagonist just everything about it introduced me to this whole new world of playstation being this amazing they write video they don't just program they don't just make video games they write video games they write them like you write a movie because these are cinematic experiences, cinematic masterpieces. They are great games in terms of the story and the gameplay, and I really appreciate that. So yes, yes, Horizon Zero Dawn. Just play it, play it now. If you don't have a PS4 or PS5, okay, well, you still have no excuse, because guess what? It's on Steam now, so you should still play it. And it really introduced me to that, and I love it still. And then we come to the last game, The Last of Us, and I, 
don't know which one to pick. The Last of Us 1 was really the first story game I ever played, uh, even before Horizon Zero Dawn, a little bit before that. It was probably the most depressing game I had ever played. It introduced me to survival horror, and it really... I really connected it with it. I really do enjoy it. And if you're watching this and you haven't seen my review of that game, please go check it out because I think it's probably the best review I might have ever done and not that many people have watched it. And I think it's pretty good. So I think you should go watch it. But anyway, that's beside the point. And then The Last of Us 2 made me jump on the Sony train. Like, I've, I am full-on Sony... I'm a Sony fan now. I'm a full-on, just adore PlayStation now, and I'm trying to play all the amazing games that they have, you know, available on their consoles. And because of that, I really think I might pick The Last of Us 2, because it introduced me to that. It really made me good at games, because before playing this, I was kind of terrible at video games. It made me it make it made me successful on YouTube for the first time. It's still my most popular video as of recording this. It's it just propelled me to new levels of success. It I met so many people who also liked it and I became friends with them. The discourse online, though horrible, and I wish people would just shut their mouths about how they hate it. It was certainly interesting and one of the most entertaining things. It's just something I will never forget. And that whole period of June 2020, though it was a terrible time for the world in many respects, will remain printed in my mind as one of my most fondly remembered nostalgic times because of this game. Uh, and the first one, too. The first one had a great impact on me as well. But truly, The Last of Us 2 is the latest game to make a huge impression on me and change my life forever. And every game on this list, I adore. So there you have it, a shorter episode about my personal history with gaming, basically. A personal timeline with five games that truly changed and made changed me and made me the game critic that you see today. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. What are some games that have changed your life? Be safe and good luck. Goodbye.